Hi, everybody. I, I'm in love with the plants, but also with my wife. I love my four kids and also the next generation coming up. Plants are fundamental for all life, vitality, and for our position here on planet. I believe that plants are one of the most important tools to help us solve the challenges facing planet Earth and humankind today. As guests on planet Earth, we need to adjust our dance. We need to balance the dance between planet Earth and human beings. The dance is pretty dominated by the last decades of industrialization, energy consumption, and the change in what we eat. Since industrialization, people have removed themselves from nature and cultivated lands. We are simply amputated from nature. Our surroundings today are quite simple. It's asphalt and concrete, urban style. And our food has changed in the way food is spread and industrialized. This is one of the reasons why we see a huge range of lifestyle diseases in an exponential growth. Plants has an enormous positive effect on mankind, environmental health, climate, and on the soil. Our senses develop, grow, and are pretty grateful to meet the magic intelligence of a plant. You will simply feel inspired, lighter, happier, and the funny thing is that your body will respond with their increased health when you meet plants. So will planet. I'm a chef. I've been working with food most of my life with an increased focus on plants. My first memory goes back to like four years old, sitting in an apple tree, like got lost in the wilderness harvesting berries together with my grandma or standing in her kitchen on a stool preparing foods from her garden. At the same time, I could hear the black birds uh, eating her cherries, and my grandpa, he did the Switzerland bell to get them away. That was my first memory. As I grew up as a chef, I met the industrial paradigm, and it actually amputated me as well from nature. So it took me some while to be reconnected. One day, I was around 35 years old, I met this farmer, Thomas. He actually changed my life. He had a farm in Jutland, or has a farm in Jutland, and he had started something called a CSA. It's pretty simple, it, it means community-supported agriculture, like how to reconnect people to a farm and let them eat the farm. I got so inspired after meeting him. So like, after two days I spent with him, I took directly home, told my wife that I wanted to do a CSA. I actually got divorced <coughs> two weeks later or something like that. <laughs> <coughs> it was a bit of a, yeah. You know, I'm an innovator, so it's, sometimes it's scary. S sorry for that. But I rented 35 hectares of biodynamic land and bought a tractor together with a German farmer, an anthroposophic, Heiner still one of my best friends, we started growing vegetables, like in a super deindustrialized model where we took the potatoes up by hand and I drove out the boxes in my wife's little Fiat Punto. Funny time. It was in my spare time. Pretty tough uh, doing that. So after a year of trouble, I uh, hooked up with my uh, partner today, Thomas, the farmer you saw before, and we said, Wow, let's build a supermarket that is, of course, organic, at least organic, or even better, biodynamic. And we distribute it all over the nation, and it would be a super success. We'll uh, reconnect people to farmed land and secure quality of soil and climate issues. In 2004, we started our quarterly emission reporting, and people said, emission what? Remember 2004? Did you know about that at that time? Today, it's, uh, it's been a in pretty impressive journey. We round deliver, what you could say, two million boxes a year. 
And someone is saying that we're changing the way people are eating. Their eating habits goes towards plants instead. We developed a huge range of different meal solutions. And it's funny to be a chef and have my phone number in the news letter. So at dinner time, people could call me and say, hey, I don't understand this. And I'd, I'll still answer. 227000700. That's my phone number. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's about Earth connection. We we'll simply like to have our feet planted firmly on soil. And actually, it's simple. We just want to take magic plants and secure that the ones who receive them can convert them into what we call magic meals. There's an aspect that people don't talk about. Monoculture is one of the big threats on planet. A uh, super innovative uh, African guy called Alan Savory, which I've met, he claims that uh, two-thirds of uh, the planet's soil is about to erode, like Sahara-style desert. And you could see it from outer space. It's uh, simply also in Europe and uh, the States, etc., because of uh, erosion and because of monoculture. You could claim that in one handful of soil, there's about, in, in a rich soil, there would be about one billion microbes. So the opposite is like monoculture, I want the 1 billion microbes to stay there and to secure biodiversity on planet Earth. So stop the erosion. And therefore, we like to say that we, we want to build soil, like in this case. And we don't want people to harvest soil. So we need to build up the soil again and secure the quality. This exponential growth in lifestyle diseases Obesity is the most visible of them all. You could, yeah, you would know that. If you do look into diabetes, stress, ADHD or depressions, they are as well rapidly growing worldwide. And I would say that it's only simple systems of a disconnected humanity. And uh, yeah, there's something wrong that we could actually deal with. And I think that plants is the answer. And I met several who found a new life through meeting plants, inside body or outside body. Like the green cabbage you smell, it develops our senses, keeps us healthy. Eight years ago, I uh, actually, by coincidence, started a school garden concept because I was kind of bored. So at the farm up north, where I am in my daily life, we took one school class in school time instead of a spare time idea. And because of doing it in school time, we really have to think, because we have to implement the curriculum inside the idea. We developed like a concept, that's how we do when we deliver boxes, etc. So I said, these eight times they visit the farm, they must experience AVE and secure when they come to the farm, so that they never will forget it. Remember sitting in the apple tree, four years old. So when they are stuck in mud to knees, they really feel AVE and actually fun, and they will never forget it. We developed the concept so that we say that kids, they grow meals. The kitchen part of the idea is like one third, so they always cook when they are at the farm. They cook their potatoes into a potato soup, the fresh vegetables into a wrap, etc. And we conceptuated further, we made a lot of evaluations, and yeah. Today, in this country where we started, you actually can't enter school without coming through this garden to stomach concept. And when we researched in it, we actually uh, showed it to Denmark and they took the idea. So right now it's rolling out as a snowball effect. So uh, when the kids, they come back after some holiday, they will experience this magic universe, which is a wow element in their life. And they really like it. They want to come back the first time they actually hate it but their love to the plants, it actually grows. We, as said, made a lot of different research, and I won't dig into it, but you can tell that they want to get back. The parents want it to happen more. They say that they learn things that they wouldn't learn in a traditional school, etc. And I, of course, it's eight times since the first one came there. They really like it, and they will never forget it. And listen what? In an industrialized country, 50% of the kids, when they are 10 years old, 
They have never met anything than asphalt or concrete. Of course, they have looked out through the window in a car or walked at a path, safe path in the forest, whatever, but they never got lost in wilderness or they never climbed an apple tree, for real. That's what I think is super crazy. As an average in industrialized countries. So, something is like wrong. And all the things I've met through uh, worldwide uh, digging into concept and uh, industrialized thinking, etc., I've been thinking about what is future farming on planet, because this kind of industrialization, it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Of course, we should use all, all uh, intelligent, sustainable innovations to secure life quality for anybody on planet. But we need to change the way we farm. I met a report made by Bernard Hubert, a French researcher. He made the Millennium Report, how to feed 9 billion people in 2050. The answer was quite simple. You simply need to eat local, you need to eat organic, and you need to eat a maximum of 20% animal energy. We need 80% local plants. So uh, Thomas and I, we talked about and I actually developed the concept for that. And that's what I will spend my future on if, if I could be allowed to do it. If it's a diet, this future farming thing, it's again quite simple. The diet need to be more raw and less cooked. More fibers, more whole grain, Less white, again more fibers, and vitamins and minerals, more farm, less industry, more plants, less meat, a maximum of 20% animal energy. And actually, if you look into an uh, industrialized country, it's again pretty scary to hear that around 50% of the population is doing nothing. And I know from me, my family, all my friends, and whoever I meet, that doing something with a purpose is the meaning of life. Also, be together with your family, etc. But how to get this done? To get uh, rid of uh, unemployed uh, factors and depressions, etc. Break the lifestyle curves, etc. I would say that future farming is one of the answers. So I would take a farm like the one I'm sitting at, 100 hectares, it could produce food for around 400 people. They could be integrated into the farm, not in a daily life, because we also have to work. But you could, for instance, take 25% of the unemployed, depressed, stressed, etc., and give them a work. Integrate them. You have the hands then, and then intelligent, sustainable machinery to help you build all the different disciplines, like you could start with beer or some of the other attractive elements, and of course, cause a lot of uh, vegetables, etc., and then build up food for the 400 families. And I'm sure you would see the emission curves, they would simply break. I'm sure that the lifestyle curve, they will break, and the soil quality would grow, grow and thrive. And uh, Willits Hall would be back. They would actually talk together instead of being singles, perhaps getting married, some of them. <laughs> so, I brought one graph, hope it's not too complicated. Uh, if you go up the line, it's amount of kilocalories, plant kilocalories produced per hectare. So how much food do you produce? Out the right line, it's amount, amount of hands being involved in producing food, and at the right, it's less people. At the left side, it's many people. The black curve, that's the OECD countries. And they could be so proud and could, they could actually say that this model would traditionally be called the most positive evolution of efficient farming. But I would say the, the opposite. And I would say that it's an, a graph that shows amputation from nature. You could also say that it's an oil graph. If you see below, it's Russia, the Turkey one. Russia tried to copy OCDs. It's, they failed a lot. If you look into Asia, out left, and go up, you see they produce even more kilocalories per hectare without that much oil and with a lot more hands. So they are actually not amputated from nature. So that's why I say that we should stay in the gardens like the plants. And this picture actually shows why I not, don't need to see a shrink or is that stressed. That's from my own garden. And that's how I eat raw 
seasonally, and plants. So anybody in here or out there, I think we need to make a change. We simply need to find the way forward, and it takes guts. I know that, but anybody could step out of the industrial paradigm where you are sitting and make a change. And just to show you, I did it when I did the school garden, but it was love that made me do that. I did it when I did the box scheme, but it was love that did that. One time where I was a little scared was when I was invited into circus. Like five years ago, I really had to find these gods. I spent three months in a circus and uh, owned the trapeze for three months. It was pretty scary. I actually fell down, so somebody you got hurt. But you can stand up again and be brave. I actually entered the trapeze again, made the backward flip after trying 200 times. You would usually spend like a couple of years doing that. I lost around, you say, eight kilos the first week and uh, had so much trouble, but I had such a great feeling. For instance, the first time I made the backward flip. So, whatever is your like and love in life, I say that you should simply go there and make a change toward future agriculture help the soil grow and help planet eat more plants to secure this planet for good. That's my dream. So, this is my dream. And we walk it. We rediscover the fact that plants are magic. They give us and planet life force and balance. In the extreme, plants create social coherence, give us and planet the meditative and therapeutic elements we all need. A path towards sustainable agriculture, climate, and environmental balance. Explore nature in extreme coherence. Feel safe and happy to the bone while being outraged. Connect to a local farm and eat it. Simply eat it. Eat the wilderness in season and raw ingredients from farm and land. Still dreaming of wealth, candy and of course X Factor. You will be in the midst of the greatest and true wealth on planet while your feet are planted in soil and grass, your senses will understand that you are at the right spot. Carrots, treetops, and cat eyes at wintertime. Well, I feel like dancing. Convinced that you will find the selling balance out there in and with reality. And thereby feel connected to something bigger that you could ever dream of. Earth is calling. Walk the line with us. And then I'll last, just make a toast in plant. You will meet it after this session. Green cabbage. Thank you very much.